We want to officially welcome you to how to get signings directly from title companies, insider secrets from two former title agents, and those two former title agents happen to be us. I'm Steve Allison. This is my business partner, Dean Calvert. We are, are excited to uh, walk you guys through how to get business directly from title companies. We'll, we're going to be sharing with you kind of our background a little bit here, why we're passionate about this subject. I started as a closer at a title company, and over that 10 years that I worked at a title company, um, my experience went from being a closer to running the closing department, managing the title company. So I learned this business from the inside of a title company, day in, day out, doing these closings at the table inside our mobiles uh, for the title company as an employee. Halfway into that career, Steve and I, when we first started our title, our signing company, uh, it was just the two of us running around doing local signings for title companies. And over the years, we went kind of regional for several years. And now for the last several years, we've been national. So we are a national signing company. 12 to 13 years now, we've been doing this full time. That's what we do all day long. Uh, our business is, we don't do any general notary work. Uh, we're very niched and all we do is uh, mortgage signings. And we were hiring mobile notaries, making decisions every day about who was going to represent us at the title company. So we relate to you in that way. Two, we own a signing company, so we're still hiring mobile notaries like you. And uh, three, we're, we are mobile notaries, <laughs> and we still do it every day. So uh, that's kind of our background, our experience, uh, and our perspective. So today is the day you get to stand up and say, I'm taking control of my business, I'm going to stand out and be different, and I'm going to create my worth in the marketplace. Okay, so the first thing we need to do when you're creating marketing is uh, identify your audience. And you might have different segments um, and more than one target audience, but each target audience is going to have a separate marketing message, if you will. So as we get rolling here, um, we're going to be kind of walking through some basics of marketing, some giving you some specific examples of things we did and do uh, with uh, marketing directly to title companies. So some ways to figure out who your ideal prospects are. One would be, you know, what, mo what signings are the most profitable? So you could target an audience that's the most profitable. So for instance, for us, some of our highest paying clients are local title companies. Oh, and by the way, uh, we sh don't have to print and we show up and they print the docs and they hand us the docs and we go in and close the loan and then we hand the docs back and then they give us another one. And so all day long, we are doing back-to-back -back closings and getting requests from in our market from relationships we built with title companies locally. So the demand is there is what I'm saying, which we, when we first started doing this several years ago for the National Notary Association, we were kind of surprised, really, when we would hear feedback from uh, notaries that are like, I didn't even know title companies would want you to come in and do signings in their office. Don't they have employees for that? Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. True. But they're busy. <laughs> and so they are busy working up the file, and all they have time to do is work it up. They don't have enough in-office staff. When, they, when they're slow and they do, of course, they're going to do that. That's where they keep the money. Uh, but when they're busy, they don't, it's cheaper than hiring another full-time employee. So I'm just telling you, in real life world today, this is happening all the time for us where we're showing up. They're the most profitable. They're very easy. Uh, they tend to be a lot of purchase transactions. So if you're not comfortable with purchases, uh, you're probably going to have to learn how to do that. Mm -hmm. um, but you make yourself more valuable. Um, you could figure out your ideal prospect by what type of signings do you enjoy the most. So let's say you enjoyed really working with senior population, right? Well, there's a product, everybody know what a reverse mortgage is. Most people don't like them. What if you were the one in your area that did like them? You would differentiate yourself from all the notaries that don't want to do them. I mean, so much so that you learned everything there was to know about reverse mortgage signings. You buddied up to your local reverse mortgage signing loan officers and said, hey, I want, to, I want to know this product. Will you walk me through? Will you teach me? Right? And now you've become the reverse mortgage specialist in your area. So you know they probably have these seminars that mortgage brokers will hold to teach potential clients of theirs about reverse mortgages. You could Google in your area when that's happening. Sign up. Go. Show up. Wait till the end of the meeting. Everybody leaves. You walk to the front. You talk to the presenter and say, Man, my name is so-and-so, here's my card. I am the local reverse mortgage specialist. 
I know everything there is to know, and that's who you want at the table, right? It could be um, an area of specialization based on your experience. So for instance, we stumbled kind of across REO closings. Does everybody know? Who doesn't know what an REO closing is? Okay, they're bank-owned properties. So when we worked at the title company, our title company, all we did for those 10 years was refis. And then we started our signing company. We got an order for an REO closing, went, showed up. By the way, REO closings, uh, the seller is the bank, so the bank's not there. The bank's already signed their stuff, so you only have the buyers there. A lot of times the REO properties are purchased from real estate investors. They already know the paperwork, and they oftentimes want to just pay cash. So now you're showing up to an REO closing with no seller that's a cash deal from somebody who already buys them all day long. It takes like 10 minutes to do these. So we stumbled across a niche that we're like, hmm, we'll maybe target that market. So there are title companies that just service REO clients. So we started researching, building a list we were gonna get into what title companies do REO closings and then we sent out marketing. What did the marketing say? Here's my notary card? No. We are the REO specialist. And just to go back to give you a real life example of what Dean was talking about, this Friday, when we get back to Indianapolis, I will go into a local title company and I will close eight back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back purchases for full fee. And that sure beats hoping that a signing company calls me to do a couple closings that I have to drive 30 minutes each way for and they want to beat me down on the fee. So once you have an idea of who you're going to target for your market, you've got to get a list together, or gather the herd, as I like to say. And, and once you've done that, you've got to understand what is their problem, okay? I, I think that where a lot of notaries and signing agents fail is we just assume the problem is they need a notary. But the problem is much deeper than that, okay? And it's going to be different for every person that hires you. And so this is how you really start to dive in and build relationships that last with your local title companies is you take the time to investigate, to have conversations and find out what is it that they really need? What is the problem that they need solved? What is their specialty? Do they mostly do purchases? Do they mostly do reverses? Do they mostly do REOs? Do they do, they do refis? Do they mostly do bank business? You know, find out what kind of business it is that they do. This is a long play, by the way. I want you to know, I, I don't want any of you to think you're gonna go home and by Monday, you're gonna have more title company business than you can do, personally, right? I, I just don't want you to go home and get frustrated because you tried two things that we said next week and it didn't work. It's a relationship, you have to build it over time, okay? So um, have conversations with them, find out what is their biggest concern? What is it that keeps them up at night? What drives them crazy about their business that you can step in and be a solution to? So now we wanted to create a solution to the problem. So we begin that by creating your unique selling proposition as the way that you explain yourself against your competition, the whole what makes you different. So a good USP is going to summarize and even foreshadow what it is that uh, your company or business is going to do for your client or prospect. So our signing company is The Closers, Inc. And our USP is we only use hand-picked, real, local closers. But you can build your USP around anything. You can build it around price, benefit, color, size, scent, celebrity endorsement, location, hours, your expertise, your coverage area, the technology you use, the social class that you service, uh, speaking different languages, convenience, etc. So your USP should answer the burning question in your prospect's mind. It should best solve their problem. Why should they use you to do their signings? Because you best fit their problem, okay? So now we're gonna talk about ways to use your USP. One of my favorite ways to use a USP is to combine it with an irresistible offer. And the best example I can think of for doing that, for those of you that are as old as me or older, will remember the old Columbia House Tape and CD Club. Here I am, 15, 16 years old. I've got my brand new CD player, right? And I got no CDs. And along comes Sony or Columbia House, and they give me an irresistible offer 
that for one penny, I can have eight to 12 CDs. All I had to do was sell my soul to the devil, right? And agree to buy six more CDs over the next three years at twice what I could buy them for at the store, right? For a penny, I had an, I had an instant CD collection, right? Like I had as many CDs as the local DJ now. You could use that concept in your business. What if you offered a title company <clears throat> their first closing for free? Say, hey, I, I think trust is important here. You need to understand that I know what I'm doing. I want to understand how you expect things to be done. Why don't I come in and do one for you? You evaluate it. We have a discussion afterwards and see if we can make this a working relationship or not. Or if things are so tight, and I'm not ignorant to that because things have been that tight in my life before, I can't afford to do that. So maybe you offer a half price closing. Or maybe you say, tell you what, let me do a couple closings for you and I'll give you the second one for free. But give them an irresistible offer, a reason that, you know what, I really can't lose on this one and it's not gonna cost me anything. So I'm actually saving the company money. I'm gonna look like a hero for doing that. But what about the idea of volunteering your time at the title company? You say, I, this whole idea of trust, look, you have your in-house closers, right? I am here to offer you my services. In order to do that, if you don't mind, I'm willing. I, my whole job is to establish trust, and you don't know that you can trust me if we've never worked together, so I'm willing to come in and work in your office for free for half a day. I would be willing to do the grunt work. I will empty the trash. I will uh, walk in the closings with your people if you would allow and watch how you guys do things, how do you perform your nuances, or your copiers. So the time that your employee calls in sick or they're on vacation and you need that good closer in your office that dresses like this, however you're dressed, which will be professionally, by the way, right? This is what you can expect. And so that these are not theoretical ideas we're giving you. These are things that we've done. Mm -hmm. And that like blows their mind. They're like, man, no other notary is walking in there to volunteer their time for half a day but that will set you apart. That's an irresistible offer that you could try. Mm -hmm. The market right now is so busy that title companies are way overworked. And so it, there may be even be an opportunity for you to get some part-time work doing admin clerical type stuff if you're interested in doing that, which would kind of give you the best of both worlds because you can make some money at an hourly rate and build a relationship with the title company that you're doing the part-time seasonal work for. So you just even ask them, you know, do you need any help? Do you need help copying packages, shipping packages? You know, could I come in in the morning? If, if your slow time is in the morning, would, it, would there be any benefit to have somebody here from 9 to 11, uh, three or four days a week? You know, the, one of the big title companies that we have a relationship with in Indianapolis, they hire seasonal employees every year. And going into it, they know hey, you're going to work these six months, but at the end of six months, there's not going to be a job here for you. you know? So that, that may be another opportunity for you to get your foot in the door to make a little extra money, but the end goal is really if you can get in there and build a relationship with them and then you become their number one closer because nobody else has that relationship with them like they do. So what could your mission-based US, mission USP be? What if it was something like every closing I do feeds a homeless person for a day? What are you passionate about? That's the, that's the key. Like, there's no right answer, okay? It's just what are you passionate about and then be passionate about it, okay? So a major part of growing your, a successful notary business is aligning your USP, which is we, what we just talked about, with your SMP, which stands for your single motivating purpose. So right there it says, I get up in the morning to do fill in the blank. What do you do? Why do you get up in the morning? In order to produce fill in the blank results. Make more money, get more signings, and run a stress-free business. That's my SMP. And SMP kind of boils down to a very concise personal mission statement. So we've set that foundation for your marketing, and now uh, it's important to remember that marketing is not selling. Marketing is about gathering a herd, creating fans, getting someone to raise their hand to identify themselves as a qualified prospect in need of your services. 
And people confuse that. They think marketing is just asking for something, and it's not. It's getting attention. So the most powerful weapon that you have in your marketing is your personality. One of my favorite examples of this right now in the current social media marketplace is the CEO of T-Mobile. His name is John Legere. I would encourage you to follow him on Facebook or, or whatever social media channel that you're on to see how an incredibly successful marketer who's making millions, if not billions of dollars, does it right, okay? One of my favorite things that he does is every Sunday, he pops up on my Facebook feed because he does slow cooker Sundays. <laughs> he's in his kitchen, he's got his pink apron on, and he spends 45 minutes to an hour teaching you how to cook this slow cooker dish that he enjoys making. And it has nothing to do with selling cell phones. And his personality shines through. He has made an impact on me because of how he goes about his marketing. And the key is, he understands the key to marketing is to be in front of your prospect and client at all times in ways that are not always asking for something. So one of the most important things about creating your marketing message is the need to write attention-grabbing headlines. For instance, you could use powerful headlines in uh, the subject line of an email. If you send a generic, boring email, just touch and base, how can I get a closing, that whole thing, oh, delete, right? Uh, it could be the first line of a handwritten letter, right? Who writes for one? writes handwritten letters anymore. Not many, some. Good idea to do it. Why? Nobody else is. A sure way to draw your prospect in is make them the hero of their story. Show them how, by them making a smart decision to use you to do their closings, they're going to be next in line for a big raise. They're going to be the hero of their clients because their clients are only getting the best notaries doing their closings for them. So we've talked about identifying their problem with what you found out in your survey or in your conversation, in your recon, if you were. So now we're talking about pointing that out in your marketing message, and you're wanting to do it in a way that's going to create a visceral reaction in them. So title companies are your clients, but they have clients. So you want to make your client the hero to their clients. Everything we say, everything we write, everything we type, everything we print, somewhere in there we're talking about partnering with them. We're their partners. We're, their, we're an extension of them. We, we are you at the table. You know, we get that. It's one thing for a title company to hire you to go do a mobile remote refi at a customer's home or a customer's bank, at the bank, right? It's another thing for a title company to invite you to sit in their house, at their office, all day long, and represent them with their agents, their clients. So your, your whole goal is to make your client, the title company in this case, be the hero to their clients. So after you identify your audience, you need to gather your audience. And I think of this as like a shepherd gathering sheep into a pen. One of my favorite strategies to do that is to look for places that have already gathered your herd. So when that relates to title companies, if your area is like our area, there's a local title association or a local realtor association, or a local mortgage banker association. Find ways that you can be in front of those groups of people, whether it's offering free classes on how to read title work for realtors, for instance, or free classes for home buyers on what to expect at your, your closing, you know, um, or be a vendor at their annual conference be able to introduce yourself to a large group of them at once. Everybody have a land yeah. title association in your area or something equivalent? You, you may that? not know it, but you probably do if you, if you, let, if you let the interwebs do the work well, every for year, you. like we have an annual commit conference right here, they have one. It's a way to get in front of the herd that's already gathered. Every day, those, all those people in the title company are walking by your booth. And I guarantee you, you'll be the only signing agent slash closer, whatever you want to call yourself, that has a booth. And I'm here. I'm different. The fact that you would invest in that tells them something, even as they walk by. Other ways outside of associations, Google, uh, always ask for referrals. Okay, so now we're going to be talking about being everywhere that your prospects and your clients are. So you could have an ad, a website you can send them to. You can be 
uh, a partner on somebody else's website, um, sending them emails, you know, it's just being in their mind. Yeah. Social media makes it super easy to be everywhere all the time, guys. And that's the key, is like, why in the world does Coca-Cola spend billions of dollars a year on marketing? I mean, I think we all get it. We like Coke, and when we're thirsty and we want a Coke, we can like turn around and there's one available for sale, right? But they do it because they're, they don't want to chance that. Because if they do chance it, somebody else is going to be out there all the time, and you're not going to remember, oh, yeah, I like Coke, because you see a Pepsi sign everywhere, and you haven't seen a Coke sign in two days. But every time I see the Coca-Cola logo, they're not standing there with a handout and saying, please buy a Coke. They're just reminding me, hey, because they know you're going to get thirsty soon. When you do, we want you to buy Coke. But they don't even say that. They just have their logo everywhere <laughs> so that you get that intrinsically, right? It's like subliminal. So same thing with our marketing. We want to be everywhere we can be. So social media helps us do that. So become friends with people that work at title companies on Facebook. If some of your social media is sketchy, you may want to create a separate social media page and be friends with them on that page as opposed to your sketchy page, right? But the, the point is, now you can use social media to do all the heavy lifting for you, right? Because you can post inspirational quotes, or you can post a link to an article about the three mistakes that title companies do to fail in a way that when they do need a closing, they're going to remember you because of your personality. So it's, there's lots of stuff, guys, okay? And not one of these is going to be the home run. So it's just consistency over time. It took us years to compile all this stuff, okay? So you're not going to do all this tomorrow. So let's give you some bite-sized chunks. So in parting, I'm going to give you three steps that you can use. First thing I would do is I would seriously work on your USP and your S&P. You've got to figure out who you are, what you're passionate about, and what your place is in the marketplace. Two, you've got to get a good business card. You've got to have something that stands out. Every time I give this card to someone, the first words out of their mouth is, that is so cool. And they'll be like, have you seen this guy's card? And I guarantee this card is not in the trash or in the pile. It is on their bulletin board because it stands out and it separates us. It's a manila folder. They deal with those every day in the title business. That's step two. You got to get a card that stands out. Doesn't have to be this card. Don't have to spend a ton of money. Use a caricature. Use something that is exciting. You got to stand out. Okay. And number three, oh, a brochure, something, a flyer, a brochure, a booklet, something that has more copy in it that tells your story and makes them understand that you get them. Thank you. Thank you Appreciate you guys. Yeah.